Hi, hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to um, my workshop. Uh, my name is Chen Liu. And um, uh, first, I want to thank the planning team for uh, organizing this fantastic virtual conference. And thank you, Nitesh, for moderating this session. I would like to give you several links over here. So if you see the link for the GitHub of this workshop and the Docker Hub, and you have the link over here for the running the cloud, uh, the live demo on cloud and packaged on website. So you can click on this uh, for the cloud instance, choose the bell conductor tool chain and put in your email address. You can submit it, use the username and password over here to launch the workshop. And it'd be our studio and uh, welcome to Bell C 2020. Okay. So as it's loading, I have pasted the link of the web page for this workshop. If you click on this link over here, and you can see the, uh, the web page for this workshop with some workshop descriptions and the Docker instructions. Uh, so if you have Docker installed on your computer already, uh, you can just copy and paste these two uh, lines of code to your terminal so that you can run this uh, Docker image as an alternative to the cloud instance. Um, so if you click on the workshop over here, you, you see the full content of the workshop I'll be presenting today. And also this workshop is mainly about the usage of the pre, uh, already pre-built RCWL tools and pipelines. And um, if you are more interested in uh, development, uh, wrap your own RCWL tools, you can just click on the articles, BLC 2020 RCWL for developers. There's another vignette that's ready for you to use. But I will not cover this uh, in today's lab demo. Okay, let me go back to the pathable. And um, I will be presenting several slides first for the introduction of this workshop and uh, uh, um, following with a lab demo. And Chang will be happy to answer questions in the end of the vignette or during the vignette if you have extra time. So I'll start with the slides. So today I'll introduce you two bioconductor packages. One is RCWL and the other is RCWL pipelines for a tool chain for the usage and development of reproducible bioinformatics pipelines in CWL. A common challenge that is faced by many bioinformaticians is the reproducibility of your pipeline. So it could be the reproducibility of your own pipeline after a long period of time, and could be trying to reproduce your collaborator's pipeline that is um, developed on a different computing setting, or you're trying to produce a um, new method that has just published. People have actually tried to quantify the time for reproducing um, new method. So they has estimated about 280 hours for an OS with minimal bioinformatics expertise. So if, if you are more skilled um, data analysis, you may use less of, but still the time is really uh, long for reproducibility. So there are several um, aspects that are involved with these challenges. First is the software dependency. Uh, typically a pipeline will involve a very complex dependency trees and system configuration requirements. And then we need specific and stable versions of the software for specific analysis. Also the data input and output connections between steps could be very time consuming, especially if you're manually monitoring your steps um, in your pipeline. And we do need a standardized description language to connect steps with the input and output. And people could use our work on different computing environments they could work locally with different operating system. They could work on the H, uh, HPC with different job managing um, system. And they can also work on the cloud with very big data uh, on different platforms. So for a reproducibility, we need portable and stable tools, reproducible pipelines across execution environments. The workflow language represents a solution for those challenges. So there are so many um, pipeline workflow uh, on the market. There's many popular ones, such as the SnakeMake, a Python workflow manager, the workflow description language from Broad Institute, and Nextflow, the data-driven 
uh, computational pipelines. Uh, today I'll be focusing on the common workflow language, uh, the CWL. The common workflow language is an open standard for describing analysis workflows and tools in a way that makes them portable and scalable across a variety of software and hardware environments, from workstations to cluster, cloud and high performance computing environments. It has been very widely used in data intensive science, such as bioinformatics, medical imaging, machine learning, texture, and it has been impl implemented on many cloud ready uh, platforms such as Galaxy and Cromwell. So with so many advantages of using the pipeline uh, workflow language, there are also many challenges in implementing them into your own data analysis. So the learning curve is now trivial uh, for implementing CWL because it requires a uh, level of expertise that is far beyond the capabilities of bench scientists and even very hard for to implement for a skilled data analyst. And also the CWL focuses on those command line tools that are usually involved as the upstream pre-processing steps for a typical bioinformatics pipeline. Uh, it lacks a connection to the downstream data analysis that are heavily uh, done with R and Bioconductor again, so it lacks interoperability with the R packages and pipelines. And for the, many of the publicly available CWI pipelines, many of them need more modularization for easy sharing and reusing, especially for those overlapping steps in different data analysis. So we have developed our package called RCWL. It is on our interface to write CWL scripts. So we are intended to provide a set of functionalities to standardize the development of CWL pipelines within R and Bioconductor and to enable the best practices and standardize data flow between steps and to promote the modularization of tools for easier sharing of established pipelines or critical steps. So it provides three uh, sets of main categories of functions. First is the composition. We can use these two functions to construct a CWL tools or a CWL pipelines within R. And we can execute your predefined CWL pipelines uh, in local computer using the high performance computing or with a Shiny app. And we have also enabled the visualization function called plot CWL um, to make the pipeline more uh, visually available for you. Easier for your communication with collaborators, especially. Then um, I'll, I'll just interrupt this one question which popped up may be useful for people to follow for the rest of the workshop. Yeah. Uh, a participant is asking why you chose CWL and not WDL or other workflow languages. I guess that's what's most relevant. And there's also a follow up. What are the main differences between WDL and CWL? So there, uh, there are quite some differences. Uh, I view, uh, maybe I can answer this question in the end of. So okay. it's a, yeah, it's a, there, there's, no, there's no R interfaces for the others. Uh, currently also, uh, we have started with the CWL. Maybe if there are more users for the other pipeline um, languages, we can consider adding a interface, but it's not like the comparing the differences is not a topic of it. Hey, Chang, I can, do you have any? Uh, yeah, I, I, I have a um, short answer maybe. Um, for um, WDL, it's kind of, WDL is more like uh, uh, for, for Java users. If you're familiar with Java, so that's kind of easy for you to learn how to use WDL. But for, for Snake Make, it's more friendly to Python users. So if you're familiar with the uh, Make language, so you can easily to adapt to the Snake Make. And, uh, CWL is more like it's kind of open uh, structure. It's more easy for our user. So that's why we use CWL here. And also the CWL structure, um, it uses the, like the structure language very similar to the YAML, uh, which are used as uh, like the header if you're developing a vignette. So it's, it's very like easier for the R users to understand. That's okay, great. I'll, Thanks. I'll continue with my slides. So 
So here it shows some simplified uh, pipeline for the single cell RNA sequencing data pre-processing pre pre pipeline, uh, which involves the tool called Star Solo for the read alignment and droplet utils for the um, uh, getting a high quality count matrix. Uh, so typically three steps will be involved if you want to build your own tool and run a pipeline in R. The first step is to build the CWL tool. Uh, so this is for developers only if you want to wrap your own tool because we already have uh, like pre-built more than 100 pre-built tools and pipelines they are free to use. Uh, basically, you need to uh, construct an R object of the tool in R using the CWL prime. So you need the, for the base command of the command line tool will be called as star and you put the input uh, parameters and put output parameters. So for input parameters, you need uh, to assign a name for it, like arbitrary name for the ID. You need to specify the file type for this parameter. You need to uh, specify the prefix if you are using it in the command line. So we got two uh, input files, one is fastq and one is the reference and output. We want to glob like two outputs. One is the file, uh, the BAM file, the aligned BAM file star solo, and one is the solo.out directory, which uh, saves the raw uh, count matrix from star solo. No, the, the raw, raw result. Okay, so these are just pseudo code. I will show you some real scripts later during the lab demo. And the second step is to connect these tools into a pipeline. So now we have the tool called Star Solo, and presumably we already have the tool called the Droplet Utils defined. And now we want to connect these two tools. And first, we need to use the CWL step prime to initiate uh, this pipeline. Uh, by assigning the input and output. Then we need to use the step function to specify uh, the two steps in this pipeline. The first step, step is the star solo. If you, you need an arbitrary ID name here and you need to run the uh, tool we have just defined in the step one called star solo and the input uh, for this step. And then the second step, Joplin to you choose the arbitrary name and uh, uh, the RCWL tool we have de uh, defined in step one here, and the input will be input of this droplet utils tool will be reading the output from the star solo uh, by reading the files in this folder. And the next is to just simply connect these tools together into a pipeline by using the plus sign. Now we have a CPAP uh, ready to run. The third step is just execute this pipeline. You just specify the name of your pipeline in R and the output directory, where do you want to save your output files? And the input list, you just assign the, the value for the input files, the absolute path over here for the fastq files and the path to your reference um, human genome fast file. I'll go to more details uh, of this pipeline in the lab demo. Uh, we also have uh, our package called RCWL Pipelines. It is a collection of RCWL tools and pipelines. Uh, currently, we have 103 tools and 26 pipelines pre-built and tested. And it covers a wide range of data analysis, uh, including the DNA sequencing, RNA sequencing. We have some specific set of pipelines defined, such as the new antigen prediction. This uh, pipeline has in integrating many uh, tools, including the DNA sequencing alignment over here, and the RNA read quantification over here, somatic and germline mutation variant calling for the tumor normal pairs, annotation of phasing step, HLE typing step, and new antigen prediction. So by running this whole pipeline, uh, we'll show you how to use it. Uh, you will get the results directly, like for the ranked new antigens just the assign values for this, uh, this yellow blocks. These are the raw files as inputs. This project of RCWL pipelines are focused towards a community-driven platform for open source, open development, and open review of best practice CWL bioinformatics pipelines. We look forward to collaborations and contributions from the community to add more specialized set of tools and pipelines to the collection. 
and by using those existing uh, the pre-built um, tools and pipelines, we provide uh, three core functions to facilitate the usage, um, which we help users to sync the current RCWL recipes, to search for interested tools pipelines using keywords, and source the tools and pipelines of interest into your R session. Okay, so if you have already uh, started your cloud instance or the Docker, have you used the Docker image by click on this link over here? Have you, okay, I have already opened it. So it will prompt you to log in. You need to use the R Studio as the username and the bell conductor as the password if you are using the Docker image. But if you are using the cloud, you will be using the RStudio as username and the welcome dash to dash bioc2020 as the username. Okay, I'll show the lab demo using the Docker here. So uh, when you're prompt to the RStudio, you can click on the vignettes over here and click on the first vignette and you will be having this available here. So for this workshop, it will require um, some basic knowledge of using R and Bell conductor packages and basic familiarity with running uh, command line tools, but no prior experience with CWL is necessary. The timeline, uh, I have just given you an overview of the bioinformatics pipeline in CWL, and I will show you how to use those core functions to update, search, and load the tools or pipelines, and how to use the single cell indexing tool, alignment tool, filtering tool, and also the pre-processing pipeline that combine the StarSolo and Droplet U tools. And if you're more interested in how to write a command line tool or customize your own pipeline, you can go to the other vignette uh, over here later. First, um, I'm introduced the data resources. Okay, let's go back to the home directory. And we have prepared all the files needed in this workshop. By initiating the Docker image for this workshop, you should already have it available in the file path over here. So click on the inst and the test data. So these are all the files that we're gonna be need for this lab demo. And uh, if you're using a cloud instance, just uh, run this chunk of code, you should already have the test data on the both clients. So the single cell data resources we are using today is the 1K PBMC from 10X Genomics, which consists, uh, okay, extracted from a heavy donor where the PBMCs are primary cells with relatively small amount of RNA. Uh, the source material consists of six FASTA files split into two sequencing lanes, each with three reads of R1, uh, represents the sequence for the barcodes, R2 for the CDA sequences and L1 for the Illumina lane info. Uh, because 10X Genomics has its own pr processing pipeline called Cell Ranger to process the single cell RNA sequencing output it produces, so which requires all three files to perform the demultiplexing and configuration, but the star solo we are using today does now require the L1 lane file to perform the analysis. So uh, we only have, we only need these four faster files R1 uh, for the cell barcode and R2 for the cDNA. And for this tutorial, we use the data set subsampled from the source files to contain only 15 cells instead of 1,000. We have also further curated the data to only include reads on chromosome 21 so that the real execution of our CWL tools and pipelines in R can be done within two minutes for each step. Uh, for the mapping, we're gonna need the white list of known cell barcode. Here we used the 15 cell barcode. They were uh, we already subsided over here. And the, the barcode uh, in the R1 faster file are checked against the, the known cell barcodes in order to assign specific read to specific known cells. And they're designed in such a manner that there's virtually no chance they will align to a place in the reference genome. And uh, we also use the HG19 version of the human genome and therefore also need to use the HG19 GTF file to annotate our reads. So these two files will be needed for the indexing. 
And in this tutorial, we are basically trying to reproduce the Galaxy pipeline uh, for single cell RNA sequencing data preprocessing. We will use Star Solo to produce a count matrix from the FASTQ and the Droplet YouTube to produce a high quality count matrix from, with feature and cell annotation files saved in our object of single cell experiment. Before these two steps, we have also added a one-time indexing step just in our workshop. Uh, with RCWL, we can easily write CWL tools and pipelines programmatically in R. We have pre-built and tested more than 100 of tools and pipelines, which can be loaded using the RCWL pipelines. Uh, for the usage of the existing tools, three major steps are needed. The first is to search and load the tool. Um, second, to assign values for each of the de defined parameter. And third is to execute the tools and pipelines. All steps will be done in R and then we can get the results ready in the user specific directory. Here I will show you the usage of three core functions. First, let me just run this code chunk uh, to library these two packages and I'll run this code chunk also because it will take about one minute. I'll go back to explain. The CWL, up, up, CWL update function syncs the current RCWL recipes and return a BELSI file cache object, which contains the most updated RCWL pipelines. Um, so if you are just using a um, specific set of tools, you can just run this one time. You don't need to run this every time you use the same tool, but if you want to try some new tools that, that were just added to the collection, you may need to run this um, our CWL update if you want to use new tools. So, okay. Now we got all tools available here and by uh, printing it, it shows the BELSI file cache and then shows the BELSI, the local cache of your uh, RCWL recipes. And currently we have 129 records for the existing tools and pipelines. And we can use the BFC info all tools here. Uh, it returns a um, file file cache table, contains all information about each available tool or pipeline. So it has a column called R name. We can use this R name to install it. And there's create time, exercise time, R path, the local um, cache path. You can also use this to install, um, to source the scripts. R tab, F path. The tab, is it a pipeline or is it a tool? Okay, let's go back over here. So if it starts with a PL, it is a pipeline. If it starts with a TL, it, it is a tool. Let's see how many we have here. So we have 103 tools and 26 pipelines. Next step, we can use multiple keywords to search for any specific tools or pipelines of interest, which internally search the keywords against uh, multiple columns in the BELSI file cache table. So let's just search uh, the star and index and present it in a data frame. So we got two records returned. So the second one is the one we are interested. In. So we are just uh, extract our name of this and use the function CWL install uh, to source the RCWL scripts of this um, tool into the, our working environment. We have a new object over here and we can also use the F path to do the sourcing. And let's take a look at the star index object. So it is an S4 class called CWL prime. Uh, it includes some basic information, including the CWL class, command line tool, and the CWL version is V1.0. The base command is star, and it shows some uh, requirements. So if you're using it on the, your high performance computing, you don't necessarily have the tool installed, um, but you don't need to worry about it. It, will, it has the Docker image ready that will be just run this tool it will call, it will pull the Docker image of the start, the tool in uh, and run it successfully. So there are some arguments, some uh, and some uh, default values for the run mode. 
and the input is the one that users need to pay most attention to. So it, there are four uh, input parameters. One is called genome directory. So there's a default value for the directory name. And there's a run thread. There's a default value of four. So depends on how many you want to run it parallelly. And there's another uh, argument called genome FASTA files and SJB uh, GTF file. And there's an output section um, that is predefined, which will glob the input genome directory as the output, which is could be uh, passed as the input for the next step. Okay, now we have it successfully loaded into R and we can run it. So before the alignment of QC in the above mentioned Galaxy pipeline, we will add an indexing step using the tool start index. The command line for indexing looks like this. If you are running it in your command line, if you call star and the run mode, there's some default value for it, run thread 10 equals to four and the folder name for the output. And you need to put the absolute, uh, you need to put the path, file path for the human genome over here and need to put the file path for the GTF file over here. So using the RCWI version of star index, we can equivalently do the same indexing within R, which was internally passing as a CWL script. What we need to do is assign values um, for the input parameters and execute the CWL script using the run CWL function. We also have some uh, help functions that help you to return some specific information for that uh, RCWL tool, for example, the RCWL version, we return the CWL version of this um, tool. The inputs, we return all the input parameters that you need your uh, user's input. The output, it will glob uh, the directory of genome directory uh, as an output, which could be passed as an input to the next step. The requirements, the Docker pool over here. Okay. Now let's assign values for this parameter. As we have all these input values, we will just assign the chr21.fa. Okay, let's do it step by step. So we assign this. So after assigning values, when we see the inputs, we can see there's added value for this argument and there's added value for this argument over here. So as I just mentioned, uh, when we do the run CWL, it is internally run as a CWL script. Uh, so as it is internal, but uh, if you are interested, we can use this function called write CWL to write out the CWL scripts so we can have an idea about how those internal things are running. So it is in the file path Let's go back to the home directory and we go to the out dir folder and we can see the start index cwl over here so there are two files generated one is called uh, cwl and one is the yaml the cwl contains all the configurations so it has a very similar look as our r object it has the basic information for the class and base command uh, the requirements and the arguments and input so it has more structured uh, format. It has the genome directory, the type is string, input banding, prefix, separate equals to true means after you write this um, parameter in your command line, you need a web space and your input put your um, file path after that. So the parameter and the sign values are separate. And the default value is star index. So there's a default value. And also in the YAML file, it saves all the uh, file parameter values for each parameter. We have the default value over here. We have the assigned value for this genome FASTA files. We have the assigned value for the GTF files. And we have the run thread equals to four. Okay. So within R, we have uh, combined both of the, we have combined both of the configuration file uh, and with CWL and the value file of YML uh, into one R object.
Okay, uh, now let's run this code. Uh, you need to specify the tool name over here. And you need to specify output directory. So it will be output as the in the out path called star index output. So it will be generated over here. Let me just run this. Uh, so attention, if you are using cloud instance, you need to change the Docker equals to singularity into false. Otherwise you won't have it, uh, you won't have it run correctly. If you are using the Docker, you can just leave it unchanged. So it is running right now. And then we can take a look at the log over here. While it is running, I'll explain more about the run CWL Docker argument. So this Docker argument takes three values. The default value is true. So um, based on your, if you are working on the HPC and uh, the runtime is Docker, uh, it will pull Docker images for the required command line tools. You don't need to pre-install any tools on your HPC. So you could also use false if you work on your local computer with all the command line tools pre-installed. So in this, in the cloud instance, we have pre-installed everything and it does not support the Docker runtime. So you have to change it into false if you want to run this lively. And also we have an option called singularity, a string. And if you're working on HPC and the runtime is singularity, uh, you need to use the singularity. And in the meantime, we can take a look at the start index um, script. So just as I have shown in the slides, you just need to specify uh, the input params. We have four input params, genome directory. It has the type of the string, the prefix, the default value. And the second parameter is genome faster file, type is file, prefix, no default value, and SGB, no default value, and the run thread n is an integer prefix the default value is to four. And output, you just read the directory as an output. And then we can construct the tool using the CWI prime by specifying the base command, uh, the requirements and arguments with the default values and the input and output. Okay, now we have it done in size, and we can take a look at output. So we have this folder. If you're still in the altdir folder, you can see the new folder generated called star index output here. And if you click on this, you have all the output files. So this whole folder will be passed as input for the next step. Okay. So to align those single cell arrays using star, it can be done directly in command line like this. So a long line for the command. So in each, uh, you start it as star, the command line tool, and solo type, there are some default values for the solo type. And there's the uh, solo UMI filtering, the default value, solo CB match type, some default values. And also you need to specify the genome directory which it, uh, is the output of the previous indexing uh, step. And the solo cell barcode whitelist, the barcode whitelist over here, and the uh, read file scene will require those um, fast file, fast Q file for the uh, CDNA sequence and fast Q files for the cell barcodes. So now we can follow the previous example to load our RCWI version of star solo and run the command, run this command within R. So just a CWL install. And now we should have it available over here. Let's take a look at this tool. So it's a bigger tool than the indexing. So basic information of the base command CWL version and the requirement for Docker and some uh, arguments with the default values for some of the uh, parameters and the input. Uh, this will need uh, users to assign values for each of the parameters over here. And output, there will be multiple output files be globbed and uh, it will output the 
the SAM file after uh, the align SAM file, uh, the log files, and the solo.out directory of uh, files that include those count matrices. So have you assigned values for each of these parameter? Now let's take a look at this tool again. So now in the input section, we have the file path for the read files in for the CDNA FASTQ files. And then we have the file two files over here for the uh, FASTQ files for the cell barcodes. And the genome directory will be reading from the previous output from star index tool and the whitelist is reading from the inst folder and there are some default values we didn't change. Okay, now we are ready to run this code. So this will, uh, we, we specify the out directory to be star solo output. It will be generated over out dir. Again, if you're uh, running this on the cloud, change it to false. If you are using Docker, Keep it unchanged. So this this should be running for about two minutes. I'll go to the scripts here and give you a quick look of the star solo. So how this was built. So we just defined the five, uh, the seven input parameters, the read files in for cDNA, read files in for uh, cell barcode, the genome directory from the previous indexing step, the whitelist, the solo type with a default value and solo UML length with the default value and the run thread with the default value of one. So we define all the four output, which will glob the pattern of .sam logs and uh, this tab file and the directory of solo.out. Then, then we uh, put this into the constructor with the base command, the requirements, the arguments. Uh, the arguments will take those um, parameters with default values that you, you don't need to uh, assign values each time. An input prime and output prime. Let me go back over here. So it is still running. Uh, if you have any questions, we you take one? Okay, uh, maybe we can take one question. Um, so does our CWL expect all third party software on the paths? Uh, expect, sorry. Uh, so I'll, I'll just say it again. So it might have been a question they asked uh, while you were presenting earlier, but so does our CWL expect all third party software on the path? Does it support any environment manager to install dependencies? For example, Conda for Python package or perhaps a singularity container with relevant software pre-installed. Uh, Nitesh, uh, maybe, maybe I'll just interfere here. It was my question. Uh, I'm Kevin uh, over here. I don't know if you can see me. Uh, and yeah, so she literally answered that question because from what I can see, it's installing all the software in a Docker or Singularity container, which is fantastic. So I don't know, maybe I, I can uh, rephrase the question in saying, do you support other uh, containers than Docker and Singularity Do you uh, for for software or is that the main source, the, the main source of software, third party. Yeah, I can answer this question. Yeah, that's a good question, actually. The, there are different kind of requirements. Uh, you see here, we, for the requirement part of this, this constructor, we use require Docker. Actually, there are some other kind of uh, software installment. Like you said, Kanda. Uh, actually, uh, it also supported, by the, this, this feature is, is implemented by the CWL community, actually. Uh, 
and there is a, a, a section called uh, software requirement. So you can just uh, uh, use software requirement and uh, uh, input a URL there. So it will install the software from Kanda directly. So that's also another way to solve the software dependency problem. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me go back to the live session. Now we have a new folder generated it should be over here, star solo output. So if we click on this, so there are all these files output and in this folder solo out and genes and raw, we have all the company traces with the annotation for the barcodes and features. Okay, let's go to the next step. Um, So now we have all the files generated in the star solo output folder and which can be passed into the next tool. Actually, this folder will be passed, uh, the solo.out will be passed to the next um, tool called droplet utils. To get a higher quality count matrix, we must apply the droplet utils tool, which will produce a filtered data set that is more representative of the cell ranger pipeline. So since CWI itself doesn't support the integration of our uh, functions, this is a unique feature for RCWL where we can easily connect the upstream data processing steps, uh, previous based on command line tools and the downstream data analysis steps heavily done on uh, RM Bioconductor. The idea here is to put anything you want to do into an R function with specific arguments for input and output files. Then it's ready to be wrapped as an RCWL tool for execution. For example, in using the package, uh, droplet utils, I'll show you So we basically did three things. So we just write everything into one function using the droplet utils function. The first is to use the read 10x count to read the, the output files from the alignment as input over here uh, and convert it into a single cell experiment object in R. And then we calculate the barcode ranks and we did the plot of the barcode ranks and uh, output in the diagnostic PDF and we calculate empty droplets and plot these empty droplets and output in the uh, diagnostics PDF. And then we have also filtered a single cell experiment by only keeping those real um, cells and save the R data. And then as we have this function already and we can construct an RCWL tool using the CWL prime. So we need to define all the three parameters, input parameters, and two output parameters, one glob the PDF file, one glob the R data, and construct a CWL uh, tool. Now we use CWL install, and in, to install this file, install this tool into our session, and we take a look at the inputs, it will request three inputs. So mainly we assign value for these three parameters, and we can run this code over here. So this will take a little bit of time, but less than a minute. Uh, sorry. Uh, it will generate an output in the out DIR called. Okay, it's done. So it's running the size. Uh, it should be the droplet utils output. And we can take a look at the diagnostics PDF. So the first is the barcode rank. Uh, and the second plot is the empty job list. If you are interested in the job list you choose, you can just refer to the vignette of this package. So I'm not covering this uh, in the workshop. And also we have this R data saved. Also, we have this R data saved, and we can uh, load it into R and take a quick look. So as we can see, the single cell experiment now only include 10 cells instead of 15. So it has filtered out five empty, uh, five cells that is not qualified. So with the three examples above there, I hope you are familiar uh, for using those existing tools. 
um, and doing the single cell um, pre-processing step by step. And alternatively and more easily, we can connect those tools and make a pipeline, which is already available in our study pipeline. It's called uh, PL Star Solo Droplet Tutus. So if you run this code, uh, just uh, use the same CWL install to source the pipeline over here. And we can see the plot of your pipeline actually over here. So these squares represent the five uh, input files and these diamonds are the tools. We have star solo and droplet utils. These uh, circles are the output files. We have sign uh, for the star solo and solo, um, star solo directory uh, from star solo. And we have uh, the single cell experiment output has uh, our data and the, the diagnostic plot from droplet utils. So I assign values for the whole pipeline, uh, the five uh, input files. Assign values, and we need to run this code for now because it will take a, it combines the uh, star solo and droplet YouTube. So it will take two to three minutes. So in the meantime, we can go to take a look at the pipeline. So it's pretty simple for constructing a pipeline because we have already have the star solo tool defined and droplet utils defined. So we define all the input parameters for the five input files, the fast queue for CDNA, set barcode, genome directory, white list, and run thread. And we define the overall output for the whole um, pipeline. So we want to output the star solo um, sample file and the star solo uh, count file and we want the out as a single cell experiment output as an R data and uh, the droplet utils diagnostics class as an output. And then we just uh, initiate the pipeline and use the plus sign to connect them into a pipeline. So it is still running. I would like to uh, make some additional comments. There are some other cool functionalities that we haven't included in this workshop. For example, the run CWL batch function is designed for execution of CWL pipelines in high performance computing with support of different job submitting systems, uh, which will be used a lot if you want to run the CWL, RCWL on your high performance computer. And also the CWL Shani opens a user friendly Shani interface for any RCWL tools. As a summary, this workshop we have introduced the usage of two packages in constructing and executing the tools and CWL tools and pipelines within R for the previously command line tools as well as customized R functions. And the pre-built tools and pipelines are highly modularized and optimized for easy customization for specific data analysis needs. And these packages are under uh, active development and we welcome any questions for the functionalities feature request, issue reports, and also um, we welcome for, it's importantly, we are trying to make this project a community effort for developing and sharing of specific sets of tools and pipelines in, the bank, in your own bioinformatics domain. So we look forward to any collaborations in developing the pipelines and please feel free to make your pull request. And also I want to acknowledge that this work was supported by the Clinical Translational Science Award to the University of Buffalo from the NIH National Center for Advanced in Translational Science. Okay, let's go back to check the last output. So it is run in size, and we can check the out directory. There should be a IC pipeline output, which I have specified when I click the run CWL. Uh, I forgot to mention, if you're still running it on the cloud, you need to change the Docker equals to singularity into Docker equals to false. Now we have the four output files, the diagnostic uh, files from the droplet utils and the single cell experiment R data, the aligned SAM file and solo the out directory from the star solo. Okay, that's the whole uh, contents of this workshop. We are happy to take more questions. Thank you. So um, that's great. Uh, it was a very informative workshop. Um, I'd like to uh, promote Leo, who asked a couple of questions to just ask them. Uh, unmute himself and just ask. That might be easiest 
rather than me reading them out? Yeah, sure. So uh, I'll ask my la later question first. Um, so uh, can you specify specific versions of software? Because um, um, I, I was looking at your developing yet um, under the build pipeline bullet point. And it seemed to me that um, you can find maybe the latest version of multiple softwares, but make, but, um, uh, but maybe you need to use like a specific Docker image if you want to use like an older version of let's say high set. Um, um, so that's one question. Yeah, still me to answer the question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you can specify the Docker. Uh, I, I, I can, yeah, well, Chang, you can answer his question. I can show them yeah. uh, where to put the version of the tool. <laughs> yeah, it's just the, the same, the same, as like uh, require Docker, just uh, open one of the tools. You can, uh, like uh, when you define the requirement for Docker, yeah, here. So basically, you only for all kinds of tools in Docker, and whether it's in, in Bell Container or in Docker Hub, they have different version of the tools. Of course, the same when you can define different version of tool here. Do you recommend making your own Docker image, or, uh, or do you? Usually, usually, I, I when when we build the, all the tools, we I search the Bell Container first because that they are kind of like optimized and it's. Uh, the, the image is very small. So they have different version of tools there. I usually just pick the latest version there. And sometimes uh, when you build your own tool, your own pipeline, uh, you might need to uh, do something customized, like you write your own script to, to wrap your wrap the tool. So you can, of course you can write your own Docker image. Yeah, some of the, actually some of the tools here, um, I build uh, my own Docker and share it in Docker Hub, and I think that's that's one way to customize your your tools. But you already will you use Bell Container. Mm. So I actually have the same question that someone else asked, which is, if a pipeline crashes, do you run the same command again, or will it start from um, an intermediate step? Yeah, that's a a really good question, actually, and um, that's a very common problem when we run a heavy pipeline. Yeah, that happens a lot when you run something, maybe some, some, something is different and something just wrong with the tools, they kind of handle that kind of input. Yeah, that happens. And um, actually it's kind of, it's a, a still in, it's kind of, it's a better feature for CW language. And um, there is an option called cache something. I, I'm not sure, um, but uh, actually it's still in beta feature. I think uh, um, now they have the version, the setup version is 1.2. Uh, they have some function to do that, uh, to reassure uh, your pipeline if you just run in the middle. Yeah, mm -hmm. so kind of keep track of this, all the intermediate file. And then um, my first question is kind of related to Kevin's question from earlier, which is um, when you're building a pipeline, so, uh, and Qian was showing um, a .r file uh, for Star Solo right now. Um, and one of the lines said like uh, require Docker, right? Um, so it's, it looks to me like you're hard coding your, um, your pipeline to use Docker. Um, and, um, but like, uh, let's say using NextFlow, your pipeline script is one thing, but then your configuration script is a separate step or you can specify whether you're using Docker or you're using LMOD for environment modules or you're using like um, a specific path for the software you need. Um, so let's say you want to have, you know, your script and sh use it in multiple locations. You need to have multiple .rs or you change the, change the requirements or how would you handle it? Yeah. Um, the requirement is can be easily changed. There's a help function, just requirements, and you can change this uh, to whatever you want, the pass. And when you try to run the tools locally, like uh, all the tools you run, 
already installed and you have different versions, you can just uh, um, put the current one, what you want to use uh, in the past and uh, set the option docker equal to false, then it will run the local tools. Um, and of, co of course, you can just write the path to the uh, command, the, the best command equal to the, the tools. You can actually, you can just specify the tool, the exact path to the tool and use docker equal to false to do that. And basically the, the main idea of this kind of a, uh, workflow language is try to solve this um, software requirement um, problem. So um, mm -hmm. we encourage, encourage you to use uh, Docker or Singularity to do that or Kanda to do that. So like a, a, a user needs to know RCWL in order to tweak it for their system. Yeah, just some functions, just uh, take the manual. You don't have to take the CW uh, user uh, guide or tutorial there. It's a lot of options there, but uh, we try to simplify that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. you can always customize your uh, tool by changing a specific um, part of the pipeline or tool and you can customize the pipeline. Um, just keep a record of your scripts and, uh, to make it reproducible for others later. So we have uh, time for maybe one more question. Um, and I see one here. Uh, if your pipeline crashes, do you run the same run CWL command again? And will it start from an unfinished yeah. step? That's the one I, I asked. Yeah. That's the one I read also. Yeah, Leo just asked that question. And mm -hmm. yeah. they depend uh -huh. on the like, new features from the CWL 1.2 if they support that. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask another question then. Um, so can you make unit tests for the Docker images that you're using to say like this unit, this Docker image has to have something. Because for example, like the Bioconductor Develop image that Mitesh uh, maintains uh, sometimes changes because of upstream changes. And so maybe some software that was installed in one, you know, one week is not available the next week or vice versa. So I don't know if you thought about unit tests um, on the Docker side. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Actually, we plan to um, do uh, to add a test to our uh, scripts. Yeah, like a unit test to check the the, the, the script and check the tools whether they are available. And also, um, we tried we plan to make a test dataset for all kinds of tools. And so basically, we need to kind of like run GitHub action to check the tools whether it works. Mm, correctly. Yeah. But um, can I just add that isn't it more ideal to use the release version because it's stable for pipelines and such because it doesn't change almost ever? Yeah. yeah we, we also have uh, two versions actually for the, uh, for the script, for the recipes. We have a de developer version and a, a, a master version. So the de developer version we try to um, develop more new tools it's not checked um, and also the master version and uh, basically we need to 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 check it, at least to run it successfully yeah for the release version yeah. I think that's all the time we have so we'll give uh, Chen you. and Shang a big hand thank you so yeah, much Nitesh yeah, no problem.